If you guys have been following along with the channel, you'll know that I've been putting some time and effort into getting these two water tanks behind my barn set up. I'm really motivated to get this done for several reasons. The primary reason being in the Sierra Nevada, fire season is really bad right now and it will probably continue to get bad um, or get worse. So having reservoirs of water close by to the structures and the neighbors, it not only makes the fire department more likely to want to fight for your house, but it also, you know, makes your neighbors more likely to. And there's many other reasons. I mean, they serve as backup water supply for the house. They're good for irrigation. I'd like to set up fruit trees up here at some point, at least more than I have down there already. But uh, it's an important project for me and it's important to get it done timely. So in the last video that I posted, I showed you guys how I plumbed the tanks in with a float valve to control the water level. And in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about how I manifolded the tanks together and why I did it the way I did. So as you can see, I plumbed everything in with Schedule 80. And I talked about that a little bit in the last video, the advantages of that. It's a heavier duty pipe. It holds up better in the sunlight. It is a lot more expensive. I mean, uh, all of this here was a 20 foot stick of Schedule 80 and that cost me over $100 for just a 20 foot stick of two inch. So it's definitely pricey, but I wanted to do it right. So that's what I ended up going with. And all of the fittings are also Schedule 80. So all the unions, all the T's, those fittings are probably double the price of Schedule 40, but again, I wanted to do it right. So that's what I went with. Starting at a real basic level, I've got shut off valves on each one of the bottom tank bulkheads. All of these valves are banjo valves. They're kind of well regarded in the, the irrigation industry as being super heavy duty. They're also, um, advantageous because they're rebuildable if the seals go bad so you can take them apart you don't have to throw the, the valve away from there of course I put unions in in case I need to service the valves and these little sections are the only thing that's not schedule 80 and not going to be schedule 80 above ground that is actually what's called a spa suction hose it's sort of a flexible PVC and it's important to put that stuff in because as these tanks fill up and drain and as this pad settles in that I built, things flex and move. I don't know if you can tell on this valve over here, but it's coming out about perpendicular with the wall of the tank there. If you look at this one, it's kind of aiming downward and that's because Last time when I plumbed this thing to fill, it kind of bowed out at the bottom. And um, as you guys can hear, that thing is absolutely full. This one's still empty for now. So the flex hose gives it a little bit of play and it also makes plumbing it a little easier because you get a little bit of wiggle room. Having valves on the bottom of each tank is kind of advantageous because you can isolate your tanks if you want to just use one and keep one as reserve. It's just a good idea. Right now this valve is shut, so this is the only tank here that has water in it. But what I'll do in a little bit is once I flush all this out to get all the little PVC shavings and dirt out, I'll open up that valve over there and essentially these tanks will act as one so half of this tank will drain down half of that tank will fill up and then the float valve up there will be splitting more water in there and they'll both fill up together this is the part that i can see some of you guys having questions about the reason that i plumbed it this way is because my master plan with this system uh, like I mentioned in the last video, is I want to take this below ground 
and go through the entire property and put hydrants with you know garden hose fittings and fire hose fittings on them so the way that i've set this up is these two valves would normally stay closed and that valve would be opened in order to have gravity flow to the entire property these two valves here are what are called cam lock valves so i don't have the fitting that goes on there yet but it essentially goes on there and there's two arms that you use to clamp it down it's kind of a quick connect fitting my thought there was is that well, if we go over here and we look at this this is my 600 gallon tank up here i've got a two inch or maybe this is a two and a half inch fire hose fitting here and i think this is a one and a half right here so my plan is normally i'm going to have these things screwed into cam lock fittings and just have them sitting on there so if there is a fire up here you know the agency or the person that decides to hook into this will have the option of both using one and a half inch and two and a half inch or whatever this is but the other reason that i set it up like this is so that i can put a pump on it so from our normally gravity fed operation with this valve open what we would do is we would shut that valve and then plumb a little honda gas water pump in here with cam lock fittings on both sides and open these two valves up and essentially the water would come out of the tanks bypass through the pump and then go back out through the rest of the system I think it's a pretty well thought out system and I think it provides a lot of flexibility to me, the user, and anybody else that might need it. Now, let's talk about the pump. This is an ancient old Honda water pump that I got for free. And as you can tell, it is pretty rusty and pretty crusty. I have no idea if this thing works, if it'll even fire, but that's probably going to be the next video that I make is me tearing into this thing and getting it set up and then getting the fittings um, on the discharge side of the pump here and the inlet side plumbed up so that they can fit those valves over there. You know, essentially, <sighs> this thing would sit here flex fitting goes into the inlet and then flex fitting goes out of the discharge so that I can get you know high pressure high flow rate water anywhere on the property so that'll be a project for the future both the pump and the below ground pipe um, as you can see over here I've got a big old cedar tree that I'll need to clear out of the way before I can do any trenching That'll probably be a whole nother video doing tree cleanup. Yeah, there's no shortage of projects up here for me to do. So, I haven't turned any of these valves yet. I don't know if this thing's going to leak. I don't know what's going to happen. But you guys are going to be able to see all of it. So, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that valve. I'm going to open up all these valves. Flush any dirt or, you know, PVC shavings out. And then once it's flushed out, I'll shut these valves again and I'll open that valve and we'll fill that tank up. So that's the air from the pipeline going up into the tank. Ahead and open this and flush the main line. See, I need to put pipe straps on this too so it doesn't move around. I'll open this one here.
open this one too just for fun even though I don't think there's much I can get out of that one. We've got the lines flushed. Now let's start filling this tank. I'll hop up on the ladder and show you guys what it looks like up there. And at some point we'll start hearing this float valve open up again and continue to fill this tank. Sort of hard to see, but that's where the bottom bulkhead is on the tank. And it is filling up. It is also real hot in there, so I guess uh, you guys probably got a steamy shot there. But yeah, these two tanks are gonna equalize. I can already hear the float valve going on that tank again. And we're gonna have 8,000 gallons of water in no time filled with a solar pump. Back up on the other tank, I just wanted to show you guys the float valve and that thing. Again, this thing seals once the water level comes up high enough, so... That's how the flow rate gets stopped. Um, if you didn't watch the last video and you're interested in how a uh, float valve gets plumbed into a tank bulkhead, I'll put a link and you guys can check that out. So really, that's it for this video. I just wanted to give you guys a little progress update, show off my handiwork here. I'm pretty proud of it. And hopefully this helps somebody out, even if it's just kind of thinking of ways that they might plumb uh, a water storage and fire suppression system. So there's gonna be a lot more work to be done on this water system and that pump and a bunch of other projects up here, cutting that tree up, getting it moved out of the way. So if you guys like that sort of stuff, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.